Let's get straight to the point. Today we're going to be talking about calculating our clearance hole diameters when we use projected tolerance zone. Now to convey the concepts today, I'm actually going to use an assembly, which I'm showing here in this front section view. Here I have a lower plate with quarter 20 capped holes. I have an upper plate with clearance holes. And then I have my fasteners coming through, bolting these two plates together. And this is a pretty common mechanical design scenario. Now, for this lower plate, I'm showing the detail for it right here. It's a section view, which my threaded feature is shown here. I've got my threaded hole call out, and then I've got my positional tolerance, and I'm using to control the locations of these threaded holes. For this upper plate, I'm showing that here in this top view with the plate, my clearance holes, my clearance hole call out, and then the positional tolerance I'm using to control the locations of those clearance holes. Now, why do we want to calculate our clearance holes rather than relying on those standard close and free fit values that we can get from our CAD packages and from mechanical design references such as tap drill charts? Well, if these parts are machined to their worst case, you go to assemble them and you use those standard values, what you could potentially have happen is you could get interference between the sidewalls of your clearance holes and the surfaces of your fasteners. It's because you relied on a standard value rather than knowing with 100% certainty by calculating the value. So let's calculate our clearance hole diameters. To do that, we need to know these three values, which we can harvest from our mechanical data. And then we're going to calculate these two values over here. So to start off with, we need to know F. It's our max fastener diameter. And we can get that here from our nominal value that we've listed in our thread callout. This value happens to be a quarter inch, and so we'd use 0 0.250. For T1, we're going to use the positional tolerance that we've applied to our threaded feature, which is right here. Now you might be asking, I've never selected a positional tolerance for GDMT before. What are some good values I can use? Well, 14 thousandths is a great starting point. It's roughly equivalent to a plus or minus five locational tolerance that we're all used to seeing. So, now T2, that's the positional tolerance that we apply to our clearance hole, which is over here, once again, 14 thousandths. So we know these three values. We can start calculating these two values. The first one being the minimum or absolutely smallest clearance hole diameter that these must at least be to where if these are machined at worst case and they're assembled, you won't have any interference. The second value is our nominal clearance hole value, which is what we're actually going to stake here in our clearance hole callout. And that's our target that we're going to give the machinist to drill to. All right, this is a four step process. To start out, we're going to calculate this minimum clearance hole diameter. So it's a really basic formula here. You won't need your calculators. It's simply F plus T1 plus T2. F being our nominal thread size. In this case, it's a quarter inch, so 0 0.250. T1, it's a positional tolerance we're using to control our threaded feature, 14,000. T2, it's a positional tolerance we're using to control our clearance hole features, 14,000. Add all those up, you get a diameter of 278. Okay, step two. What we need to do to begin building or compiling this clearance hole callout we need to first apply a size tolerance to those clearance hole diameters. Now there's a lot of mechanical design reference information out there uh, based on how tightly you need to control the diameters of those holes, which lets you choose uh, a tolerance you can apply. However, I've compiled a table here of low cost, easily repeatable drill tolerances that a machinist can use and you can use for your designs. All you need to do is take your minimum clearance hole diameter and plug it in where it belongs here in these range of values. The 278 belongs right here between 201 and 400. Just take this low cost drill tolerance and apply it right here to the clearance hole diameter size tolerance. All right, step three. We've already calculated our minimum clearance hole diameter. Now we need to calculate our nominal clearance hole diameter which we're going to state right here in our clearance hole callout. To do that, another very basic formula, pretty simple. 
We're going to take our minimum clearance hole diameter, which we already calculated, and we're going to add the absolute value of our lower tolerance value that we stated here as our size tolerance. So, minimum clearance hole diameter, 278, 278. The absolute value of our lower tolerance value that we stated right here, so two thousandths, absolute value. 278 plus two thousandths, you get a diameter of 280. Now this is our mathematical design value. Feel free to take this value, plug it in as your clearance hole diameter in your clearance hole callout. With this calculated value, you can be absolutely certain that if these parts are machined to worst case and they're assembled, you will have no interference between the sidewalls of your clearance holes and the surfaces of your fasteners. Now, you might be wondering, you said I can plug this value in, and yet this value does not match the value you listed as your clearance hole diameter, and that's true. What I did was I went one step further, one little mini step. I said, okay, what are the standard drill bit sizes that are available to a machinist in their inventory? Do they make a standard drill bit that has a diameter of 280. Unfortunately, no, they do not. So what I did was I selected the next larger available standard drill bit size, which in this case happens to be a letter K drill bit, which has a diameter of 281. This lets the machinist know, look, I know what standard tools are available to you. They can quickly identify this number, go grab a letter K drill bit from their inventory, get it chucked up, and get machining parts. So this is the value I list in my clearance hole call out. Okay, so we're finished compiling this clearance hole call out. We're done with that. The last thing we must do, absolutely must do, we need to apply projected tolerance zone. If you follow this method and do not apply projected tolerance zone, you can no longer be 100% certain that your parts when they're machined at worst case will assemble interference free. So you have to apply projected tolerance zone. Now I'm going to give you guys a quick and dirty rundown on how to do this. I'll cover projected tolerance zone a little more in depth in a future video. Alright, how do we apply projected tolerance zone? First thing we need to do, we're going to apply this circle P symbol here inside this positional tolerance that's controlling our threaded features. This tells the inspector, as well as the machinist, I'm invoking projected tolerance zone. The next thing, we need to apply a value right here next to the circle P. Where do I get that value? I gotta go back here to the part that has my clearance holes in it. Now I need to look and see what's the maximum length of my clearance hole feature. Well in this case, the maximum length of my clearance hole feature is equal to the maximum thickness of this plate. What's the maximum thickness of this plate? Well if you look here, Thickness is 750 plus or minus 5. The upper end of that is 755. And that's the value I've stated here. Okay. The last thing we need to do, we need to make sure we have a section view of this part with the threaded features. We need to show our axes of the threaded holes. And we need, with our threaded hole callout, we need to point to the axes of one of those threaded features. And this is really important. You also need to make sure you point to the surface of this part that's going to mate up to the part that has the clearance holes. Section view, point to the axis of one of those threaded holes, and make sure and point to the surface of this part that's going to mate up to the part that has the clearance holes. And that's projected tolerance zone. All right, this is a method you can follow to where when you're calculating your clearance hole diameters, with projected tolerance zone, you know with 100% certainty that if these parts are machined to worst case, they will still assemble, fit, and function properly without any interference. One little quick note, you do not apply projected tolerance zone to your positional tolerance that's controlling your clearance holes, only the one that's controlling your threaded features. Just want to make sure you're, everyone's absolutely clear on that. Okay, everyone, that's straight to the point. Thank you for watching. We've actually hit a thousand subscribers, so thank you. Thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing. Be sure to hit me up on my Instagram, at straight to the point GDT, and you'll see what my next video is. 
In this case, I'm actually going to show you guys how to calculate your clearance hole diameters when you're not using projected tolerance zone. It simplifies this portion, but it makes this formula just a little more exotic. I'll see you guys there.